Hey everybody, this is John Stauffer. I'm here to bring you a tech tip from StreamingTeacher.com. Today I want to talk about the MockSim Analysis Deviation page. The deviation page is essentially the same thing as Compare within Verify, but this is the tool that we would use within a full MockSim simulation to do the same sort of thing. Now you might be using MockSim simulation if you are using something like a PostAbility bundle. This is the MockSim simulation page. You find this if you are inside of Mastercam. And if you use this simulation up here, that is what we would call a MockSim simulation, as opposed to the Mastercam simulation. In the MockSim, we do have the analysis deviation page. You can find it by opening this analysis panel here, not the toolpath analysis, but the other one. And once you have that panel up, there's a drop down menu and you'll find deviation right here. Under deviation, we have a whole panel of colors, and this is very similar to what we would see inside of verify compare. Let's talk about the different ways we can use these settings. First off, the deviation panel comes standard with nine colors. Now we can change the number of colors here. You can do that by going down to the bottom under number of colors, and you can either use these arrow keys on the right hand side, or once it's highlighted, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to increase or decrease the number of colors. The number of colors increases by two or decreases by two. So it's always an odd number. You see, if we go down to five, then we only have five colors to think about. However, you do have to keep in mind that the way that this splits within the automatic range is a little bit odd and maybe not right for everyone. Going up to nine colors makes it pretty balanced. If you go up, let's say you went up to maybe 25 colors, then you get a much more narrow spread within each color. But do keep in mind that the more colors you add, the less the colors are really different from each other and therefore can actually be harder to tell apart from each other. So you will have to think about how many colors you really want to manage while you are inside of this window. Let's go down to, let's say seven colors. Seven's pretty reasonable. It gives us seven distinct colors that are very easy to differentiate from each other. We can also change the total plus minus value. You can see that we basically have a spread of negative 0.0576 to positive 0.0576. We can change that by going down to our gradient minimum and gradient maximum fields. So let's change this. I'm going to set this to negative 20 for the minimum and positive 20 for the maximum. Now you don't need to choose numbers that are the same. They don't need to match and be positive or negative. You can set this however you like. I'm doing this to make it a little bit simpler. Once you have values in here that you like, you can click this button here for refresh. This will refresh the simulation here and show you the difference in colors between your model that you've chosen as your part model and the stock. So as I look in here, I can see that I'm mostly pretty good, but there are some problems with some of the corners, especially right here. Now we can further refine the way that this shows us data. Rather than using the standard minimum and maximum and the number of colors, I can switch this from auto to manual. This allows me to go in and actually change the values that we see within each of these fields. Now do keep in mind, I can't really change the number of colors once I switch to manual. I also cannot change the maximum or minimum value shown here. We have to do that while we are still in automatic mode. For now, we're going to leave this here. What we can do inside of manual mode is click on each one of these fields and change them. For instance, our green band here is plus or minus seven thousands. Now that might be too broad for you and you might need something much tighter, something more like plus or minus two thousands or less. You can double click in each field. You may have to do it twice, then add your own numbers in. So I'll set this to negative two and I'll double click here and set this to positive two. So now my green band is only plus or minus two. You can also see how the yellow field has adapted to this by showing negative two to negative 13, six. And then the positive side of that is positive two to positive 13, six. You can continue to go through each of these fields and make changes if you need to. I'm going to leave mine here. 
Once you've made your changes, you can click this button here to refresh again. And now it's going to refresh what you see inside of simulation. Notice now that I see a little more spotting here. So if I am trying to make everything two plus or minus two, maybe I need to refine my program a little bit further. But you also need to keep in mind that what you see here may be a little bit off. There could be some striations in here. And based on the final toolpath that's been used to clean this out, which is a contour, I'm pretty confident that what I'm actually getting here is fine. And what I'm really seeing here is just some striations. You can also go right up to these color blocks and double click on them and you can change the colors for each band. So if you don't like the colors that are here by default, you can set them to whatever you like. You can use this standard color hex, or you can go to the custom field and set a purely custom color, even setting this by RGB values. Well, I hope that was helpful for you. If you like this tech tip, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. But more importantly, if you're looking for high quality Mastercam training content, head on over to streamingteacher.com.